I've been 3D printing now for many years and most of that printing has been happening in my basement. And so I have all my printers set up down here and the air circulation down here isn't the greatest. Now, most of my printing that I've been doing has been FDM printing. And so all the filaments that I've been using, none of them have really put off a, let's say off-putting odor. The worst maybe has been ABS and even that hasn't really been that bad. Now, just because you can't smell it doesn't necessarily mean that it's not bad for you. Uh, however, if you're not smelling it, you're probably just less likely to do something about it. And so lately I've had the opportunity to print with a resin printer and we're going to see a video about that in the future. Uh, but this was lent to me and I've been, you know, toying around with it and I didn't really want to make a big investment into, let's say, ventilation because I'm not sure if resin printing yet is something that I want to do long term. However, even in the short term, resin printing does produce quite a strong odor. Now I do have a strong sense of smell, but I'm not very sensitive to the odors, but I have to say with resin printing, the resin smell is very off-putting, at least to me. And so that prompted me to do something about it. And so in this video, I wanna show you guys a solution that I came up with for evacuating odors from a resin printer. And this will also work with FDM printers if you do have a very sensitive sense of smell. And so this is better than just cracking open a window because that's just a very passive sort of solution. And so this is gonna be more of an active solution in drawing out those fumes and evacuating them to the outside. The solution may not be exactly what works for you, but even if it doesn't, maybe it will inspire you to do something similar and find a very similar solution. For this project, you're still gonna need a window somewhat close by, and you're going to be taking the interior dimensions of your window frame. And so in this case, I have my basement window, and you can see me taking those dimensions here right now. Next, you're gonna to need to get yourself a piece of plywood, or in this case, I have a piece of OSB that I had laying around, and you're gonna cut it down to dimensions smaller than that of the inside of your window frame. And it doesn't have to be precise. Uh, we're gonna be filling the gap with some foam, but in my case, I have these quite large foam blocks that I salvaged from some packaging. So you can definitely scrounge around if you have some packaging from something you've purchased recently. And the foam just has to be uh, soft enough to deflect and conform because we're gonna be pushing this into the window frame. Most of this fairly dense foam can be cut with a sharp knife. And so you see me here scoring it and just ripping it off and it comes off quite nicely. I'm gonna be using these thicker sections here. And once I have one of the thick sections, I'll show you what I'm doing here in order to get it to fit onto the edge of the wood. So I'm gonna take my knife and I'm gonna score a line right down the center. I might have to run the knife through two or three times to get it to the proper depth. In this case, the depth will be about halfway through this pretty thick piece of foam. I believe these are about three inches thick. And you can see that there's just a channel large enough where I can take the edge of the plywood and then I can run the edge right through that foam and friction will hold it in place. I'm gonna be fitting the foam around the entire perimeter of this sheet of OSB and you may have to do a little bit of extra work around the corners to get those corners to fit together like puzzle pieces. Once it's done, you should have a nice rectangular piece. And while you're doing it, you may also have to be trying to place it in and out of your window frame to make sure you have a nice tight and snug fit. Now you can also see why I've cut that hole in the OSB and that's to accommodate this pretty standard vent that is normally meant for the exterior of home. Uh, for let's say a bathroom fan or a dryer duct. And so we're gonna be fitting that to the outside of this board with some number eight by five eighths inch long wood screws. And so I actually got this vent in a kit that came with some flexible hosing and some other odds and ends. Uh, but you can find these individually, like I said, at your local hardware store for a few dollars. And now I'm gonna be fitting on some handles onto the inside face of the board. And what this is gonna be for is to be able to more easily push and pull this panel in and out of the window frame. Without handles, there's really not much to grab onto and it makes it very difficult. So I printed these on my FDM printer, uh, but of course you can also print these on your resin printer if that's the only thing that you own. And they're also going to be attached to the OSB using the same number eight by five eighths inch long screws. And if you guys want the design files for these handles, check the video description down below. I'll put the link down there. 
After that, the panel was ready for another test fit in the window frame, and you can see there's really no gaps around the entire panel, and it fits quite snug. Also notice that the orientation of those flaps is down, so that when there's no air blowing, the flaps remain closed. Now I'm going to be attaching the sheet metal coupler to the plastic vent. And so this is what the actual flexible hose attaches to because it won't fit around the plastic vent. And you'll notice that I've drawn a line across here and I'm gonna be using that as my cutting line. So I'm gonna be using a pair of tin snips here to cut down the length of this sheet metal coupler. And this is of course because I'm not putting this through any sort of a brick wall or something like that. So I don't need that kind of length on this thing. I just need a few inches to attach the hose onto. With the coupler cut, it simply just rolls up and locks into itself. There's a flange there that you'll see will slip into itself and lock into place. Then from there, there are little hole cutouts in the one side of the coupler, and those fit on the inside of the plastic vent, and there's little uh, locking features on the plastic vent that will snap into place on those holes in the coupler, and that'll hold it in place. So it just takes a little bit of wiggling to get into there, but eventually I'll get it. With the window panel complete, we can take a look at the fan we're gonna be using, and it's a pretty standard economy bathroom fan. There's nothing inherently special about this thing. It's a 70 cubic foot per minute fan, and that's not really a whole lot. It's definitely not gonna clear out an entire room, that's for sure. It's obviously intended for something small, like a bathroom. However, I'm gonna be placing this right on top of my printer, and so I'm hoping that the very close proximity of the printer is gonna help evacuate those fumes. Right now I'm playing with the outlet plug on this thing, and so if you leave it plugged in to the top of the unit there, there are wires that you can hardwire it into as if you were installing it into a regular uh, bathroom installation. However, conveniently, because of that connector, I can just plug in an extension cord. Depending on where you have your printer and what's around it, you may have to build a frame around this thing if you're not willing to chop holes in your drywall ceiling. In my case, I already have built a workbench where I put all of my 3D printers. And if you guys wanna see how I made that workbench, I have a video on that. I'll put that in the top right hand corner of the screen. Otherwise, it's pretty simple in my case. I have two pieces of two by two wood that are supporting the ventilation unit and that's sitting on top of the top shelf of my workbench. And I can move it along the shelf uh, depending on where the printer sits. Right now, it has to sort of be biased over to the one side here, as you see it in this shot, and that's just because the included dryer duct hose that came with my kit was only five feet long, and so I'm gonna need to get myself a longer hose. In this clip, you'll also notice that the extension cord has been plugged in, and the cover has been put on the fan. In terms of the flexible hose, that's held in place right now with some zip ties that came in the kit. Uh, but I really think that the proper solution would probably be metal hose clamps. And so that's it for this video. I hope it helped you guys out or at least inspired you guys to do something about those potentially dangerous fumes and odors coming from your 3D printers. Now again, resin printing, at least for me, seems to be worse than the FDM printers. And it's really made the resin printing experience that much more enjoyable and tolerable. And I'm really happy that it did this and it didn't really cost me a whole lot. So it's a very small investment into the hobby and into potentially my health. Thanks for watching.